through the scriptures, there's something that you find. There are times that God will sit down and look at man and say, child, this is a matter for regret. How could man have turned out like this? The scripture says he repented God that he had created man. And it says the heart of man is desperately wicked, continually. He's seeking for the evil to do. We'll go from one level of evil to a higher level of evil, and we have no end to looking for what is bad to do. As a matter of fact, human beings, all of us, we have this tendency of always looking for whatever is not right. But somehow man has to change. You know, we read Jeremiah and everybody will keep reading the same verse. And he says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Did you read the verses before it? It's a statement of regret. If you had followed me, I know what I thought I want to do for you. I want to bring you to an expected end. And it says in the Psalms that before God had put anybody in a womb, he had written all the days of the life of that person. Does anybody live that life? No, no, no. We come out and live the kind of way it pleases us. Today we are going to read Psalm 81, verse 13. Psalm 81, verse 13. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel will walk in my ways. 14. I would soon subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their adversaries. This is God bleeding. This is God crying. This is God shedding tears. These are people that I would have wanted to save from the hands of their enemies. But would they listen to me? And this thing is still continuing till today. There are situations we get into, and you think that God is not seeing. He's looking at you and wishing that you were listening to him. Some of us, we're in that situation we are as it were, calling upon the Lord to help us. But have we changed our ways? Listening to God means doing what God desires. I am asking God to help me out of some trouble that somebody is giving me. I am even giving more trouble to others than that. And here I am lamenting. I am almost dying. And God looks at me and says, what? I wish this one could change. I want to help him but he wouldn't listen to me. How many times are we not lamenting, but God can't do anything because we have blocked it? He said, does it mean God does not hear us? He hears. His ears are not blocked. His hands are not shortened. But what has happened? Our sins have placed a separation between us and God. Jesus came, removed that separation. We are still going back into sin. Like I used to say, the preaching of today is that you can sin. It doesn't matter. Nobody even remembers that Jesus died because of sin. And then you just go and sin and think that it means nothing. It says you are trying to crucify the son of man a second time. You cannot crucify him a second time. And so what happens? God can reach you. This statement of regret now comes. I desire that I can help that child. But he's so stubborn. He wouldn't want to change. Let's read verse 16. He would have fed them also with the finest of wheat and with honey from the rock. I would have satisfied you. That is God. You are destitute. You are crying for help. You need the wonderful things of this life. The finest of wheat, honey, the best of the best. But you can't get any. You get the crumbs of life. Why? Because you have not obeyed God. It is time for us to learn to obey God. We are not obeying God for his own good. We are obeying God for our own selves. When you don't commit that sin, heaven claps hand for you. And when they clap for you, oh, they will do something for you, something great. Joseph refused to commit sexual immorality. He could have done it and walked away from there. After all, nobody would have seen. And it would have been a continuous affair. And well, let's hope that he would not have impregnated the woman and maybe lost his life as a result. But he refused to commit the sin. Although he went to prison, God took him from there and put him on the throne. Far, far, far better than whatever he would have dreamt of in his entire life. Even when they told the father that Joseph is a ruler in Egypt, it was unbelievable. 
you would think of it, how did this one evolve? Who is Joseph? What kind of instruction or education does he have to rule? Even the Joseph would not have imagined him in that position, but he refused to commit sin. He said, I just wish these people would listen to me. Can I listen to God? Can I, as a person, be willing not to do that evil and do the one that pleases God and stop myself from getting into that thing? Can I, as a person, decide that I will not say such things as others are saying? I will not do what everybody else is doing, although it seems to grant them benefit, and my refusal will put me in trouble in their own eyes. Let it put me in trouble. God will distinguish me in his own time. And when he does, all of them will be baffled. In the case of Joseph, can you imagine Potiphar and his wife, how they felt when they woke up one morning to discover that Joseph was the head of everything? And anyway, Potiphar would have been there with Pharaoh when Joseph was elevated above him, above all of them. How would he have felt? And when he came back and told his wife at home that Joseph is now the ruler of Egypt, because Pharaoh said, I am Pharaoh, but without you, no man will lift a finger, which means even the Potiphar will not lift a finger, except Joseph said so. Being able to obey God, listen to him, and do the things that he desires. Let's learn to do it. It will be good with you. It will be well with you. It will change the course and direction of your life and will bring untold wonders to you, even the things that you never dream of or imagine. They will happen for you in Jesus' name. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen.